So welcome everybody to another episode of Build and Drive where today we are going to be taking a look at our DISA valves. So if your car is suffering from some rough idle at startup or it's making some grinding noises when you're accelerating on the throttle, it could be your DISA valve right here. Now, what is a DISA valve? There are two little valves. If you have the three-stage M52 manifold, intake manifold, there are two valves. There's one right here, which is this small one. And then there is a larger one. And this is the one that we're replacing today. So what the, ND, the DISA valves actually do, they remain closed from low rpm you have air coming in to your intake through the throttle body there and these remain closed so that the air has to travel a lot further through the intake and that will allow you to get a lot more torque because the the intake runners are now a lot longer the air has to travel a lot further and that gives you more torque but then as soon as you get above 4000 rpm and you get on the gas these diesel valves open up and allow the air to move directly a lot shorter distance into the engine thus increasing horsepower at higher rpms now the problem with these valves is they go bad there are little motors in here especially as you can see this one's a bit oily there are these little uh probably i would assume that they're brushless motors that turn a little worm gear that opens the flap and close the flap well that wears out and what you'll get is a grinding noise and eventually this has a self-diagnosis check on the computer and it will give you a error code it won't throw a check engine light that may be because of a misfire maybe that that's caused by this but normally it'll throw you a code and say that hey this diesel valve is not working so there are two sets of codes which i'll show you right now but there'll be one code for the intake side sorry for the smaller one and there'll be one code for the larger one right here. So to check the codes, um, I use the Carly app and we're just gonna connect it right here. It's this little uh, Bluetooth OBD2 dongle that you can plug into your car. This is the first generation one. They have a nicer black cased looking one. So I'm gonna just scan some codes here with you guys. So I've connected. And of course, I have some very bad issues. It's still the airbag light. I, I know you guys, I need to fix that. I'm working on that. What we're gonna do is just scan and check for issues. So I'm gonna click on engine. And here it says variable intake system self-diagnosis. And that is 002AAB. Um, that's the bigger DISA valve. And if you have the 2AAC code, that is the smaller DISA valve. So what we can do is uh yeah you can search for for this information online see rough idle and harsh vibration um, exhaust vanos but eventually you'll get to replacing the disa valves so yeah it could be a dirty vano solenoid which i don't think it is it is most likely a disa defect so here's a good question how can we tell if it's a DISA defect or if it's a Vanos solenoid defect. Well, we can check with IMPA on our computer, which I'll pull out right now. And what we can actually do is, uh, well, first, maybe I'll leave this plugged in so we can test it, but you can actually plug in, plug in to the OBD2 port and open up IMPA and actually cal not calibrate. You can actually trigger these, whatever the word is, to actually make them open and close and you'll be able to hear the sound, like the grinding noise on either of them, and that will tell you like which one is bad. Um, but what, what I'm gonna do is actually, I've already replaced this one. This is the broken one uh, from a while ago, and I'm gonna actually take this one out. We're gonna put it right here, and we're gonna test it to see if it actually opens or closes when we trigger it with IMPA. So what also tends to happen is these can break in the middle, there's a little plastic pin, and from opening and closing, opening and closing, these can get worn and loose. Now, mine is not loose. It's nice and 
it doesn't there's no play in there this one is a newer one and also there's no play in there but this can break and this little plastic thing um, this little plastic dowel can come out and go into your intake and normally it lands in cylinder six and um, it can wreck your valve it can uh, uh, yeah it can do some damage in there and you may have to rebuild your motor Hopefully you guys don't need to rebuild your motor, but if you do, there's an entire rebuild series right here on this channel on how to rebuild the N52 engine. So feel free to subscribe if you're interested in that and drop a like as it really helps these videos grow. And now back to our DISA video. So what they do is there is a rebuild kit or a replacement that has the metal pin here. Um, this is a generic no-name brand uh, because I'm on a budget, but it has the metal pin, um, the updated metal pin on this one. So I'm happy about that. So what I'm going to do here is just, um, I'm going to remove the power steering fluid reservoir just over to the side so I can get at the DISA valve bolts. And we're just going to pull that out and set it right here. So it's just a, you just need a small ratchet and one of these guys. So I've removed the four inner Torx uh, bolts or screws here. It was a T25 inner Torx. And I had to move this bracket out of the way. There's just, just one, one more right there. I just kind of loosened it and I was able to pull this stuff out of the way. And now this should be a little bit sealed in there. Should pop out. Hmm, I do have to take that bracket off. See this bracket right here? I do have to take it off, just one second. All right, so I got it out. A little bit of oil in the intake, which is not good. I mean, hmm. Anyway, so as you can see, this little pin, the plastic pin at the top here, has snapped. And this is just in there totally loose. And what can happen is this can separate and break and go through your engine, which is not good. So this is a Male Disa valve, part number 051291513222. Does that have a date on it? Does not have a date on it, but um, this is why we're replacing this. With the newer one, they look about the same. And this one, of course, has no play in it. So just for now, let's plug this into IMPA and see if we can get to actuate so you can hear the sound that it makes, the grinding noise um, that it makes. So you can tell if this is bad or if it's the motor that's gone bad. So after a lot of fiddling to get my cable to work again, this is a Max Diagnosis 1 1998 to 2008 cable, uh, OBD2 cable. I have a link in the description for that cable. There are a lot of other cheaper ones from eBay and stuff like that. And I ordered a $20 cable and it just didn't work. So I paid for this one, it was around $50 and it's working. I did have to fiddle because I'm on a Mac. So I had to just fiddle with my uh, USB uh, settings to get it to connect again to IMPA. But then what we're going to do is go Shift um, F2. And just hold Shift and then click on E90. And we're going to select Engine. And we have the MS70 uh, computer. And then it will bring up this menu. So what we want is, I believe it's F6, which in English, this should mean actuator activation. So I'm going to hold, um, if I click down here on F6, and then this is activation one, 
an activation two for the Disa valves, I believe. So then we have actually two menus that we can choose from. Both have multiple different things for actuation, actuation on this uh, N52, but what we want is F1. So we're gonna go click on the F1 menu. And then here under F shift F6, we have a variable, see this is all in German, but VIM DISA, which this is what we want to actuate here. So I'll hold shift. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to check out my other video tutorials on my channel. If any of these videos were helpful to you, consider dropping a like and sharing these videos on social media to help other BMW owners save money fixing their cars. See you guys in the next video.